All right, folks, so today I've got this Amiga 500 motherboard uh, that was sent to me. And well, it, first, the obvious, it's missing uh, a few ICs, Paula, um, uh, Agnes Paula, and the even CIA over there. And uh, it still has Gary, Denise, uh, the uh, 68000. Uh, it's been fitted with a diagnostic ROM here and it has the uh, odd CIA. First, we need to find um, a few ICs here, but the existing ICs, look at that. Look at that. It's missing, it's missing legs. Uh, not only that, but it's been uh, fitted by uh, <laughs> somebody who's no business owning a motherboard like that. Uh, there's a lot of legs that are uh, out of the socket. Uh, there's uh, a few more missing legs and these legs. Okay, let's let's focus, focus, focus. Um, and this is uh, this uh, traces of uh, oxidation on the legs. I'm just trying to look. Yeah, there's more here. Oh my God, this IC is in terrible state. Um, uh, is there anything broken here? I need to take them out of the socket. There might be little legs uh, broken. Okay. <laughs> this one doesn't seem to have any broken legs. Uh, oh, I spoke too fast. Uh, okay, I need to take those ICs out and see how many more legs we're missing. We're missing three here uh, that I can see. I uh, don't see anything quite here. Uh, let's uh, let's have a look. Okay, so I've got the 68,000 and look at that. I mean, some of the uh, pins were bent. Uh, they are all here. This one was bent underneath the socket. Actually, there's two of them. We're going to have to try to uh, straighten them as best as we can. We're missing three here. Uh, is there more here? There's another bent pin. And that was going under the socket right here. Wow. So, we we can probably, we can probably salvage this. I don't see any trace of the metal maybe on the third one so we're gonna have to see if we can i've uh, i've done this before for uh, a few arcade ics uh we can actually drill into the into the uh the the, the epoxy of the uh, the ic here because the ic itself the package is probably somewhere there and it's no bigger than this um in general for ICs, I don't know specifically about the 68,000. So uh, what you get then on each leg is just a wire uh, running like that uh, to the central package. So we might be able to um, to dremel out a little area here to expose some of the wire, some of the uh, some of the legs and resolder legs onto that. So we'll do that. I'm gonna start with this one. That's gonna be a good practice because I have a replacement or a few replacement uh, 68,000, but uh, it's going to be good practice uh, for this. Uh, let's move on to the next one. So this is the Denise I see. Look at that. Look at that. Look at these two guys. Oh my God. Uh, we even got... Yeah, one might be bandable back. This one is is uh, is has been cut, damaged. But we can solder a little leg to that and see uh, if we can get it working again. Uh, legs are all here. Okay, so, oh, there's one flat here. So two legs to straighten on Gary and uh, and one leg to just complete or finish. Uh, what we can use is a little a leg from another IC. I have a pile of broken IC. I've kept some of them and used the leg and just solder that on top. Uh, next, we have the uh, odd CIA. Get all the legs on this side. Oh, but, oh yeah. So is that again... Yeah, that's completely cut. But we have one leg that's cut. What happened to this poor uh, motherboard? Last we got... Oh, oh my God. Uh, this is uh, Gary, and Gary is crusty. Uh, I think there's enough... Um, there's enough metal here to actually solder a new leg directly. I don't think I need to dremel in. Hopefully same here, but this is... This is corroded, and we might have uh, corrosion has started to creep inside, but we'll we'll see. I've been questioning, I've been wondering what happened to this poor motherboard, and I think what we have here was 
a motherboard that was used for parts. And whenever somebody took a part, they put the old part um, that was broken or damaged in this case, uh, but untested. So I think what we have is untested chips, obviously, because we don't know the status of missing legs. I think that's it. that must be it. Somebody used that for part, for, uh, spare ICs, put the broken ones or the, the damaged ones here, um, just randomly uh, squished a few legs in the process that would explain that and then didn't test them or didn't do anything with that motherboard and uh, probably didn't have time to uh, try and fix them or couldn't be bothered. But um, for a video, I think this is a perfect candidate. We already had a disaster and this leg broke a uh, fourth leg here. This guy here was just too weak when I tried to uh, even touch it and it just crumbled in my hands. Uh, I checked the other pins, they're all fine, except except this guy here, which is uh, kind of weak as well. And so, I mean, I need to dremel around here for, for this guy anyway. So we might just extend here and expose this and maybe see if we can strengthen this uh, pin as well. Right, so with uh, a Dremel and a couple of uh, stone uh, grinding heads, uh, I managed to expose the uh, the rest of the legs. So these legs would actually run like something like that, you know, uh, to the center of where the die actually is. So there's plenty of metal. So next, uh, I'm going to see if I can reuse a leg from just a spare IC I have somewhere, you know, um, broken ICs and stuff like that. And if I can just re resolder them on top of this. All right, I've done the same thing to this IC and I'm just gonna see if I can salvage as much of the metal um, going over here as you can see, but you can see all the traces running from each leg to a center die uh, right here. That's probably <laughs> got destroyed um, uh, while sanding this down anyway. All right, so we got our legs, well, somehow, somewhat fixed. Um, actually, we got legs. Uh, this uh, this side was trickier to do, and I should probably have uh, done it under the microscope just for just for my own sanity. Uh, this was rather easy. I had plenty of uh, trace exposed, and uh, as I was working, I noticed this leg was a little bit weak, but I think it's still holding. Um, 
So I'm going to I'm going to chance it for now. What I want to do first before I put this back is put this in a socket and then put that into the socket on the board. That way I'm going to put stress on the uh, socket that's on this guy and not on the legs directly uh, just in case just in case some of some of the work doesn't hold. It's usually uh, when you do work like that it's usually what you need to do afterwards just put the uh, IC on the socket and then put that then into a socket on the board uh, just to relieve stress a little bit. So uh, I don't know if this works, but it certainly wasn't working with uh, six legs missing. So uh, it's nothing lost, really. Anyway, okay, next in line is Gary. And Gary is, is not looking good. Oh, my God. I'm going to see if I can clean this first. Um, I'm going to try something. I'm going to leave the legs uh, or I'm going to soak the legs with WD-40 and maybe leave them overnight just to get rid of the direct corrosion and then see what I'm dealing with afterwards. In the meantime, the uh, board came with a, an EEPROM on it and it was missing uh, two legs, uh, this one here and this one here. And what I've done here, uh, because there was a, the, the, the tab, most of the tab was here, but the little thin leg was missing. So what you can do in those cases is just take like uh, the leg from a resistor or a capacitor and, uh, and just uh, solder that on. And right now, just want to see first if it works and the best way to see if it works okay if those legs are working is actually to put that in my EEPROM programmer and to just run a, a read on this. So it's gonna take, uh, yeah, okay, cool. it's working. Let's see, oh, it's byte swapped. Uh, can we, can we byte swap just this maybe? Diagnostic run by uh, John Hartl, that's him, diag run. Uh, v1.1 so it's uh i think it's 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 what version is uh, the diagnostic run now i think he's working on the new version as well but i'm gonna i'm gonna just erase the EEPROM and put the new version uh in there and uh, i think i think that's our at least our EEPROM working so that's one out of uh one out of one two three four ic's five ic's um saved so that took me most of the day. Uh, who knew that fixing legs on ICs uh, would be uh, time consuming like that? Uh, so the uh, the uh, 6800 you've seen already. I also, um, so when I was trying to uh, strengthen the pins, uh, this one here in the corner broke, so I had to Dremel in again. Uh, but the other one uh, that was kind of half broken actually uh, is this one, yeah. So for this one, I just use a another pin from a, a resistor, and uh, that did the job. Uh, I did the same thing, obviously, on the EEPROM, and now I have Digron uh, 1.3 on the EEPROM, and uh, that's working fine. Uh, these are still untested, so I don't know uh, I, what's going on. There was one pin on the, C, uh, the CIA here, uh, which, uh, uh, yeah, it's this guy here that uh, I had to redo. And Gary, uh, Gary cleaned up quite well. I was able to kind of, uh, uh, well, clean up and uh, tin the, uh, each pins. But this one here uh, proved a bit too tricky. And I think it, it broke as well. So uh, I just had to dremel in just to get a little bit more metal because there was a little tab just about sticking out uh but that was just too too small so that shouldn't be solid enough so yeah just put each of them on a socket uh, to fit in the socket and that way it's going to be much easier to sort of move those ic's uh, uh uh in and out of here so right now i can't do much testing because in order for the uh, diagram or in your room to boot i need i need at least agnes I need uh, Agnes deals with all the memory addressing, um, roughly. Uh, Gary deals with all the sort of glue logic for everything around, really. So we need that. It also inserts a few signals for the uh, CPU. 
uh, technically, I'm not sure we need Denise. Denise is the video chip, and uh, if we serial out to get the, the, the diagram, I don't think we need Denise. I could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I think the odd CIA is needed. Uh, we don't need even CIA that deals with uh, parallel and the floppy drive. And uh, as far as I know, we don't need Paula to actually boot uh, the system. I think. What we can do, however, is test each of these ICs, at least these three, into this machine. Uh, this is my original Amiga that I had when I was a kid, and uh, it's just been on <laughs> display on my wall for a while. I retro-brighted it years ago, and it looked perfect, but look, it's actually uh, marbling now. It actually looked great for, for a few years, and it's it's coming back. The yellowing is coming back, but it's coming back in places with that sort of marbling effect. I'm not uh, I'm very happy about that, but that's just the way it is uh, for now. And it's not a problem for this video. So I'm going to open this guy and um, start swapping um, ICs, probably starting with the, uh, the, uh, the CPU, Gary, and uh, see if we get all these. I'm not going to bother with the diagnostic ROM, although I could change it and put a kickstart in it just to check that the the IC is okay. Uh, Future Ollie here, as I'm editing here, I should also mention that in order for the diagram uh, or an EEPROM to work on this board, this is a Rev 5 Amiga 500, Revision 5 Amiga 500, you actually need to do a little mod uh, across, connect a few lines on the EEPROM ideally, or, which is what I'm gonna do later in the video, uh, get an adapter. Uh, much simpler, much easier. There's no soldering or anything like that uh, to get the EEPROM to work. All right, we got the uh, processor here. Anyway, let's uh, try this. Oh, oh. <laughs> we got a floppy running. There you go. <laughs> that's so cool. Wow, okay. So that's great news. Man, six, six pins uh, were... Uh, changed on uh, or was fixed on this guy and it's still working it's still booting up and uh, that's cool so i'm going to leave that in for now and i am going to now try uh, gary uh see if the machine still boots with uh, gary and then we'll try this guy and because we're not using serial but I'm using the floppy instead of using the uh, this for the odd CIA. You can swap those. They're exactly the same IC. We're going to use it in the even CIA position. I'm not keeping a, my hopes up too much for Gary, but just got to try it. <laughs> hey, no way. <laughs> this, oh my God. Wow. So Gary is working. Um, the, the computer just wouldn't boot uh, if Gary wasn't working. So that's uh, oh, two pins fixed on Gary and so much corrosion on the, on those legs. Uh, I had to I had to use a, just a fiber and buff them slightly as well with the Dremel. Uh, each leg, sand them down a little bit, and then I retin them afterwards because they were just uh, too exposed. And after that. But Gary's yeah, still working. Denise is in. And we'll <laughs> we'll know right away if there's an issue because we'll get garbled graphics or no graphics or anything like that. Look at this, colors and everything. Denise is working. That's three out of how many? Five. Um, three ICs out of five saved. CIA in. Let's try this. If I can hear the drive. And there's a disc in it, and it's loading. Oh my god! One, two, three, four out of five so far. I know this EEPROM program properly, verified properly, multiple times, uh, so it's most likely fine. So I think we can safely say we have five out of five here. Uh, but I'm just going to get an adapter and uh, just call it a day uh, with this one. Uh, I just want to confirm that this boots and that uh, we can uh, maybe launch. Uh, uh, launch diagram. So I think I have another one of these. I'm going to put diagram on that, uh, but just confirm that this IC is also uh, it's also working with 
uh, kickstart 1.2. All right, folks, so I've got uh, ice, he's back in place. I got an Agnes now, and I got a Pala for this board. It's actually borrowed from my other board. Um, I had, well, I'll talk about this later on. <laughs> um, I don't have a CI. The Pala is needed to boot to kickstart. It's not quite needed here because I have the diagram, it should boot to diagram without it. But when I powered the computer, I just get greeted with just a, a black screen. And uh, uh, as you can hear and see, I've got my uh, trusty, one of my trusty uh, oscilloscope here. But um, essentially, I was just uh, probing a few pins here. And the first thing I checked was obviously the clock. And we indeed have a clock. That's fine. But the halt signal here uh, on pin uh, what is it, 17 uh, is, uh, it should be high, it's active low, so that means the CPU is halted. And there's one signal, one external signal, so it's a, it's a, it's a uh, both ways, uh, the signal goes both ways on the halt signal. And it, one of the external signal is Gary here, and um, so I suspected Gary, so what I did is I lifted the pin here from the CPU to check if Gary was still low, but when I check Gary here at the right pin, it's high. Um, and Gary also shares uh, a connection with this uh, um, pull down resistor uh, that's what 4.7k or something like that, uh, and that's high uh, as well. So uh, that means we've got something else setting the um, halt signal uh, on this guy. I double checked with a different CPU and it's not this, this works fine. So uh, there's something else happening that's actually causing the CPU to halt internally. Well, I know Gary works, I tested in another board. I know this guy works. In fact, I, I know all of the ICs work, maybe bar this Agnes, I haven't tested it in another board, but uh, I, it doesn't quite share any trace with the halt signal. So something else is pulling that halt uh, signal high and it's probably something else internally in the CPU that is telling it to um, halt. By the way, uh, the uh, reset line is high indeed and when I probe the halt signal when I boot on it goes high for uh, half a second or very quickly and very quickly goes low. All right, uh, it's a good bit later, so investigations and just probing around. Uh, I wasn't getting, uh, as I was saying, the hall signal to be asserted um, by the CPU, or at least it was halting, the CPU was halting itself. Um, so I looked at all the data lines and there was nothing happening on the uh, data line, or address lines uh, at all, and data lines. So... I was like, okay, usually when that happens, like either Gary with, will assert the halt signal for the CPU or the CPU does it if it can't really communicate with the diagram. Uh, typically that means, you know, there's a broken trace somewhere or there's a, a problem between the two communicating. So what I ended up doing, first I thought it could have been the fat Agnes. So as you can see, I went over the uh, each pin just pulling them uh, pulling them uh, uh, out of there and uh, that didn't change anything and then i was looking at my cpu uh, the way i had it socketed and those are single uh, swipe uh, sockets okay two things it's single wipe not single swipe and second uh, you should always replace single wipe sockets they're useless whenever you see them whenever you can replace them Nobody ever got the job done on a single wipe. I I, I think the, where are they? Uh, these guys just weren't getting deep enough and making contact or making enough contact. I ended up cleaning the socket, uh, and but that didn't solve anything. So I took the CPU carefully out of there. It's actually quite solid, a lot more solid than I thought it would be. Just put it directly into there and let's uh, power this on. Well, actually, <laughs> there you go. 
Uh, we won't get a serial because I don't have uh, Paula um, uh, enabled here. I, I don't have Paula in. But I have, uh, I'm booting to a uh, diagram. I just want to check quickly. I, I'm going to populate Paula from another board uh, temporarily and put a kickstart. Just want to see if we get to the kickstart screen. Right, I got a kickstart uh, 1.3. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have no idea. I, 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 I didn't think I didn't think I'd be able to first get all those ICs to work, and and even less uh, get it to boot to a kickstart. I just put the diagram, but I just want to show you when you, you need Paula in to be able to uh, get any sort of serial uh, coming out. So um, without it, we don't get an output to serial. Uh, which sort of defeats the purpose of having diagram like if you don't have any uh, display. But in this case, we're fine. We've got a display. So, all right, this is the board as it stands. And my plan is, as I said, to turn it into a Franken board. So I'm going to appeal, I rarely do this, but uh, to any of you around. And if you, if you don't mind sharing this video, uh, maybe to somebody who might. I am looking for... A Paula and an even CIA. I know I can find these easily on eBay for cheap enough, relatively cheap enough, but I'm looking for <laughs> ICs that have broken or missing legs, essentially. That's going to be my goal, to find a, a, a Paula with a few broken legs and an even CIA with a few broken legs and see if I can first restore them, get them back working and, and have it so that pretty much every single custom on this is uh, is has sustained some physical damage at least uh and same with the case i'm gonna see if i can find or if you know if you have one if you know somebody that has one a cracked case or a broken case or something like that uh that i can um, maybe fix in a more visible way than uh, the fix i did with the monitor uh which the goal there was actually to make it as you know invisible as possible but in this case i'll make the uh, the repair as visible as possible uh so that's going to be my plan i think turn this board into a, a franken mega if you will um so anyway let me know and uh, and we'll see this board again uh hopefully soon but we'll definitely see this board again even if i uh if i don't acquire these uh, these parts anyway folks uh so i'm gonna leave it there thank you for watching this was uh, certainly a uh, an epic leg repair at least and we got this machine back booting uh so it's going to be a multiple part series if you will uh folks thank you for watching don't forget there's a, a, a patreon and a youtube membership if you want to support the channel there's also a discord the link is in the description folks thank you for watching and i'll see you next time